Bulletproof Radio, a state of high performance. I'm going to ask an inflammatory question here, and I'm going to preface it by saying anything that you do that makes your cells healthier is going to make you more resilient to everything. And the reason I'm prefacing it is now, do we have any data about spermidine and COVID-19? Yeah, there was actually a study really pretty recently that came out on, on spermidine and COVID-19. Oh, wow. And, you know, and I, I don't want to, you know, have this pulled off the air because, you know, but. Um, <laughs> We're not talking about treating, diagnosing or curing that. We're just talking about being right. stronger. All right. So what did the study yeah. show? <laughs> so, so. What it did was, again, improved the – remember what happens when – there's a couple of things that happen when COVID goes awry. And one of the big things is we know there's this cytokine response. And that bad cytokine response, that these inflammatory cytokines start causing this cellular destruction. And that's why people go on to have cardiovascular damage and strokes and kidney damage is because now you've – you've damaged the, the lining of the blood vessels because of these cytokines that have appeared in response to the COVID. And we know that spermidine, and again, we saw that in the, in the osteoarthritis mouse study, is it markedly reduced a lot of the inflammatory cytokines that we see elevated, like tumor necrosis factor alpha, and alpha and interleukin-6. Six. And IL-6, right. There you go. So, That's the one. So it, and it upregulated the M2 macrophages, which are your good anti-inflammatory macrophages that help get rid of bad things. The other thing it could be used for is, again, remember that you to form a normal immune response, to have normal immune surveillance, is that you, you basically have to have this, this balance between the anti-inflammatory and pro-inflammatory side of our immune system. And so if, if somebody's so inclined to get vaccines, well, this is going to definitely enhance the vaccine efficacy as well, because you're going to be able to respond in a much more appropriate fashion to to somebody interested in putting a new antibody into you. Could it maybe lower risk as well? I know this is entirely hypothetical. It, it's, I think it's definitely going to lower risk you know, because, okay. you're again, when you, when you get your body into an immune healthy state, as we all know, it, it, that's why higher dose of vitamin, anything, anything that gets our body right. to an immune healthy state is going to make us a lot less likely to get COVID and get sick. So if I have lower reactive oxygen species, it's why obesity is a risk factor. It's why, you know, cardiovascular disease is a risk factor it's because those guys have very high levels of reactive oxygen species. Their bodies are in a very poor state to recover. So you get some little infection and you have a horrible outcome. So by down-regulating the reactive oxygen species, up-regulating the anti-inflammatory macrophages, the M2 side, reducing the inflammatory cytokines like IL-6 and TNF-alpha, you're in a perfect state to be able to fight this disease or not get it at all. I, you know, I, I, I'm not very afraid of getting COVID. I, I do all sorts of things to keep my immune system healthy. And, you know, I think that unfortunately we're focusing so much on, on, you know, isolating ourselves and, you know, and everything and, and not just getting healthy. But if you're not afraid, you're not a good person. Just remember yeah, that. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, you have to look at your individual risk, not average <laughs> risk and all that kind of stuff. But we don't have to get all political. Wait, I thought this was science. Never mind. We won't even go there. But uh, I appreciate you saying that you don't have a, a high degree of personal fear there because uh, that's a, a refreshing right. message. I, 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 be, uh, I wear my mask and I'm, and I'm careful around the people. But I do think, yeah. you know, and, and you've pushed this. It, it all comes down to people have got to start taking some responsibility for their own health. And, you know, it's it, like I said, before spermidine ever makes it to, before your doctor ever recommends spermidine to you, it's going to be, I don't know, 10, 20 years, maybe. Hmm. I don't maybe never. Right. No, yeah. it's, it's going to happen. I, I'm, I'm doing my job. <laughs> my job is to yeah. make the stuff no one knows about happen faster. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. and, then, and, and that's and that's our goal, too. I mean, Boulder Longevity Institute, that's, we have a whole, what we call Human Optimization Academy. Our goal is to teach the people because you've got, and that's why I love your, you know, people like you who are out there spreading this stuff, because if you rely on somebody, a doctor to tell it to you or the drug company to bring you something, you're you're going to be way behind in terms of treatment. So so you need yeah. to learn these things. You need to understand these things. 